YouTubers. I'm coming to you from where I work. And what we're going to do is um, I had a viewer. I'll put his name down at the bottom. It slips my mind right now. But uh, a viewer contacted me about making wheels for a train that I have in my backyard. Uh, he's probably seen the video. Uh, if not, you know please watch it it's pretty neat it's something i put together for the kids now uh, they're all growing up it's still in the backyard i still play with it now and then but when i did my video i had one of the wheels go bad so what i want to do in this video i'm going to show you how to make a set of wheels you can see right there i have three different kinds here because i want to show you there's certain ones you can use and certain ones you can't that'll work with the setup i have and let me get to you I'll show you what i mean Okay, what I have here is a piece of angle iron. It's about, uh, I'd say, what size is that? Inch and a quarter. So it says on the label. That's about the width of the railroad, top of the railroad I have. And what I want to do here is show you what rims will work. Now, most of the time, you'll find a rim like this with the sides like that. Now, this would work. Let me just show you, though. It would work. Only problem is you don't have as much area of the wheel on the track. And this would work, and this would roll by, and the flange would be right there on the, the right. That would work. You know, the other thing we don't, we'd have to make some kind of a hub. Because don't forget now, this is going to be powered by a uh, transmission of a tr uh, tractor. Now what you want is something with a rim... A little extra width on it and I don't know if you can tell in the picture it's tapered okay now if all you railroad fans know that when a train rides on the rails look at that that covers more area of the track than the most of the traction you possibly can get on the railroad now why is it tapered well if you were to have two of these side by side here and you take paper cups, or paper cups, put a toothpick through them, point them with the, the both bevels outward, and roll it across the tracks. What will happen is if you have the wide end to the outside, it goes around a turn, it'll just fall right off. If you have both bevels, or the wide ends of the cups pointing inward like they do on the railroads, it's not hard, it's a little exaggerated. You roll it across, and when it makes the turn, it tends to roll over and hit the smaller part of that cup. The other side gets the larger. It kind of acts like a differential and helps steer it around the tracks without having to rely on the sides. If I can get a good angle of this. Riding on the edge like that, because if that keeps going on, you hear that squeaking when the trains go by. That ee! That's the flanges hitting the edges of the track and scraping them off and wearing them out. You'll see if you ever look, I don't require, or I don't recommend going on the railroads to look at the railroad tracks, unless it's an abandoned railroad. But you'll see the one side will, on a turn will always be like worn down more than the other. And that's the reason why they're going around pretty fast. And those flanges are the only thing holding that train on to the edge of the rail. So, yeah, you want a, a rim like this. Now, you could make a hub for this and everything, you know, but don't forget there's going to be a keyed axle in here. So you really want to get, this is a junk one, of course. You want one that a shaft will fit on with a key. And it has that long edge. Now, the only thing about this one that I don't like, oops, this stuff falls on me. You can see this is smooth all the way across, but right here they have a little ridge. You know, I'm not too happy with having a ridge like that, but since this is the only wheel I can find like this without having to destroy a brand new one, and which costs more money, we'll go with this one. That ridge will flatten down a little bit, might wear down a little, but that'll help if that's on the inside, and the other one has the same thing on the inside. That'll help give it that differential action, I call it. Because don't forget, between the axles of a train, there's no differential. It's solid. It's, it's all-wheel drive. 
or the live axle they call it. All right, now the next thing we want to do, since we only need this part, we're gonna to have to cut this rim in half. Now I want to show you how to cut these in half. You see if there's a there's a weld right in the center here. It goes all the way around. And what this is, is basically two halves welded together. And you want to cut right on that weld, but you want to stay on this side of the weld. So you damage this end. You don't want to cut through here. Actually, you do want to cut through there, but you don't want to cut through this side. Because, see, that's going to be your support for your wheel to the hub. This side... You can cut on the inside of this right around if you have a Dremel and you want to take your time and do it nice. The quickest way I found out, let me show you how to do this. Okay, so what I got here now, a little setup. I got a 5 8 uh, piece of stock, round stock. And these, these are just here to keep that right, right up against the, the vise here. And just slip this on like that. You want it to spin free. Now what you want to do, safety glasses. Safety first, always safety first. Got your safety glasses on. You get yourself one of these, a little angle grinder. Now let me just see if so you can see without hitting sparks. You want to get right on the outside of this weld. I don't know if you can see it right along the edge of that weld here. Let me show you a little closer. You see that right where I have the wheel? You want to ride on that edge and then back up. Oops. Put you back up there. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying not to throw sparks at my phone, so I'll move it over here a little bit. Now, what you want to do is going to get a little noisy. And you can fast forward. You want to grind and let this spin. So it's like a lathe and you're cutting that spot all the way around evenly. All right, here we go. See that line I'm starting to let those grinders stop see that line I'm starting to cut through there just want to keep falling now I did have to slow it down a little bit you might have to just be careful of rough edges on here I clean this up pretty good there's no rough edges to get my fingers snagged on you know watch when you wear a ring you don't get snagged on some um, but yeah just just so you have light pressure on the, the wheel and it's just grinding make sure you stay on when you're looking here on your point of view, it would be the left side of the weld. You don't want to go over here on the right because you'll this will come off. The hub won't come be on. It'll be all ruined. All right, we're gonna finish this up.
Okay, you can see how I'm cutting that line right here. And I'm almost through here. It's going to take time. You have to have patience with this. You screw it up, that's the end of this wheel. You can't use it for anything else. go now this part you can discard now you might be able to use it for something else i don't know a lamp face or i don't know what you would use this for but you know scrappers keep everything so in the scrap bucket with that now what you have is a nice in the frame here nice wheel all the way around stayed on the weld Ooh, that's sharp gotta watch that I'm gonna take a brush and wire that. You can even take the grinder and just. Move it out. Pull the bones Pretty good, yeah, that's nice. Okay, we're done with that grinder, thank god. Now, as you can see, I got the camera a little bit this way so you can see inside here. You probably can't see, it, but right here, see how the hub comes out, and you got about another inch or so that you might have to come out. Now, you can put spacers in here, but what I would do is any spacers you use on that shaft. Weld them to the hub somehow, even if you have to sleeve a piece of pipe over and a couple spacers. And this keyway is critical because that's gonna, that keyway right there, and you see it right in there? You wanna make sure you have something with a keyway in it because now you can use this for the front or the rear wheels. Uh, you can put this on a shaft and spin it without a bearing as long as you keep it greased. Uh, you can you put, hook it to the transmission, the 5 8 shaft, it'll fit right in the key. And this will work. And the only thing you might want to do is clean it up. That's it. That's all you have to do to make a wheel for these trains. And that'll ride right, whoops, that'll ride right on the rail nice. And this is a round rail, but you can see how that flange is going to fit. Now, if you want, you could probably get someone to make a ring or a plate with a 5 8 hole and weld that on here. And if you want, you can get. I'll show you a piece of this. Now, this is what I'm thinking of doing to the one wheel that went bad. Because after a while, this is going to wear down. This is very thin. This is only what I'd say, uh, I don't know what to say, 14 gauge steel, maybe 12 gauge steel. It's only about an eighth of an inch thick. But what you can do is put some flat stock on like this. And then either you can do it. Weld it on and roll it all the way around this and then true it up on a lathe if you have that kind of equipment or access to that kind of equipment. And you repair the wheel, make it last longer. You'll have a nice surface. Now you should clean the rust off of this, but I usually leave it on because that kind of helps with traction, especially when the, the rails get wet. And then you know what happens when you get wet rails, you get slippage. And what happens is slippage, if you watch the Pioneer Tunnel Tour, we had slippage going up a little grade and we almost stalled out. And I don't know what we would have done if we would have broke down there. Okay, now all you got to do is put it on the train and have that. The rest is up to you how you build the train, but this will get you started. You get yourself an old Craftsman tractor. If you have tracks, here's how you make the wheels out of the rims.
It has to be a certain rim. That's the only problem. You can use all different kinds of rims. Try them. This works the best for me. All right, and this is the coal cracker. Uh, hopefully, the next adventure is going to be a big one. I got, I got someone I hooked up with. Uh, kind of wants to go in some mines, and I know some places, but I need an air meter. And well, this guy is an air meter, so hey, stay tuned. Like this channel, subscribe to it, please. Um, hit the notification button or bell if you want to get notified when I put up more videos. And please comment. Be nice about the comments so far you have. I'll take criticism, but be polite. Uh, and until then, this is the Coal Cracker. Or should I say Exploring with the Coal Cracker is my channel is called. But I'm the Coal Cracker. And I'll see you at the next adventure.